Hello, I'm Ryan McEachran, and welcome to The Dig. On this episode, we welcome back Bob Isaac from the Business Health Council. In our last conversation on episode eight, we discussed the top five metatrends that will impact companies in a post-COVID world. Today, we are going to discuss how to address these trends. But first, we have our own Stephanie Alvarez to share some important information with us. Hi, Steph. Hi, Ryan. It's good to see you again. I would like to share one of the great benefits that all of our new and existing members receive every time you join the Canada Pavilion organized by MSCA Canada on an international trade show, as well as domestic events, such as our annual forum, you will receive a member rate providing great savings. For more information about our membership, contact membership at mscacanada.ca. Thanks, Stephanie. We'll catch up with you later in the show. The last time we spoke with Bob Isaac, he introduced us to what they saw were the top five metatrends that will impact a company in a post-pandemic world. In fact, some of these trends we are seeing right now. But what do you do with this knowledge? Well, the Business Health Council has prepared seven steps you should consider to come out of the pandemic stronger and more successful. So let's dig in with Bob now. Hi, Bob. Welcome back to The Dig. Thank you. Yeah. So last time we had you on, uh, we were discussing uh, the five meta mega trends or meta trends you, you had that would impact companies in the pandemic. And no sooner did we do that show and, uh, you know, we're hit with this uh, aluminum tariff, like bam, right away. Yeah. So um, maybe we, if we could quickly kind of reiterate what those five meta trends were. Well, the first big one, and I think you've hit on it, is protectionism. We've seen that already. The number two is accelerated pace of change in general, adoption of uh, new practices, for example. The next, uh, the third big trend is the acceleration of automation of both industry and professional white collar services. Um, number four is accelerated growth in digital, whether it be fulfillment, whether it be online sales, logistics, et cetera. And number five is increase in acquisitions and consolidations. That may be a little longer term, uh, but it's a trend we're seeing as well. Right. So now that we, you know, we have this awareness of these five trends, we're obviously seeing some of them happen right now. Um, what, what, do, what do we do now? What do we do? Well, you know, our position is that it, you need to start planning a little more uh, diligently than you have in the past. Perhaps a lot of company companies have done strat planning, but we're really recommending that it not only be done, but be done more frequently. Right. And so you, you've set up basically seven steps, I believe, that will help guide a company through um, doing exactly what you recommend. Yeah, so what we call them is the seven most important steps. There are multiple steps underneath to make these things happen, but yes, we've got uh, seven major steps, and that's what we're here to talk about today. That's right. Okay, well, let's get into that. Um, what, what, you know, the first one here, lean in. What, lean in. That? Well, the term, was, the term was popularized by Cheryl Sandberg in the book of that name. Uh, we're using it, the same kind of concept of, of leaning in, but for a slightly different reason. The reason in this case is, you know, there are going to be some winners, there are going to be some losers in the short term and the long term. The fact is you can sit by the sidelines, you can try to, uh, you know, keep a low profile, but there are some fundamental shifts taking place in the way business works. Uh, that's a combination of a result of two things. First, because we've seen some things happening that we like, for example, remote working, and they work for us. Um, uh, we've also seen some things that we're concerned about and want to make some changes in, in our business place. But also there's some things, some perturbations happening. Uh, if you don't embrace these things in the short to long term, what's going to happen is the industries and your competitors will change around you and you may find yourself by the wayside. So first of all is lean into this recognize that some of these changes are here for the short term, some for long term, and try to manage your business around them. Right, right. Okay. So number two here, you have shorten your planning cycle. Absolutely. You know, there, there are some changes that are going to take place and they're going to be long term changes. Uh, but while we move towards that, it's a bit of a, a sinusoidal decline, if you will, moving towards that new normal. Uh, what's happening is there's going to be an awful lot of perturbations in the marketplace, for example, tariffs on and off, 
protectionism on and off. Um, so as a result, what we're suggesting is, you know, you take a long-term perspective, but, but have a team that's mobilized and able to start planning in quite short-term increments as well and looking for those perturbations so you can adjust to them, adopt to them quite quickly. Right, yeah. And it, to me, it logically makes sense. With the, the, the more uncertainty, the less you can look out in a longer-term time frame. So you've got to shorten that. Um, excellent. So the, the third one here, set up an innovation team. Right. So, you know, we're recommending that uh, you do set up an innovation team, uh, that it is a multifunction or cross-functional innovation team that includes everything from operation to finance to sales, marketing, etc. And you start looking for, you know, new ways to uh, address your business and to move your business forward. Really, the innovation team's perspective is not so much the daily perturbations. I think your operations folks will take care of those things, but take a longer term perspective on where is the business going? How do we need to move forward? And what adjustments do we need to make to our business in order to accommodate the changes that we foresee in the future? Right. And, and a lot of people see when we use the word, at least in our sector here, uh, innovation, they always are thinking um, commercializing R and D and the new product development and stuff, but as you said, a multi a multi discipline team. This is more than just the product development. This is about sales. How are you doing your marketing and sales? Mm -hmm. How else are you operating, uh, and and where do you innovate in that regard? Absolutely, and that really gets into the fourth step, and that is consider doing a complete value chain analysis. Mm -hmm. In other words, you know how you source materials, how you market, how you sell. How you touch your customer is your customer's journey. Has it changed? Should it change? You know, customers want to buy differently now. Historically, perhaps you know, trade shows were popular. That's no longer the case. Face-to-face um, -face conferences were high. That's no longer the case. So that customer journey has changed. The buying process has changed. Uh, likewise, your your sourcing materials has changed. And in fact. Not only do these things change, but they can be done more strategically. They can be done to get an advantage. So we're really recommending that you look at a value chain, the complete everything you do from conceptualizing products through to uh, sourcing, operations, uh, sales, marketing, etc. Look at your environment value chain, see where you add value, and rethink it because that value chain is going to change as we move into the future. Right. And I, I've recently heard of an example where, um, you know, when or if right now, if even if you're able to say, uh, do a sales pitch to a, to a client, um, with the technology we're using right now, say such as Zoom and stuff, you can now have those experts with you in that room virtually discussing. You don't have to do it in isolation. And so you're enhancing that customer experience as well. So very interesting. They, and, and that really speaks uh, to the, the sort of accelerated pace of change. You know, that, that was available to us uh, six months or a year ago, right. but it hadn't been commonly accepted as a good practice. Um, you know, we, we veered away from it. What's happened is we've accelerated the adoption of that technology and, and those processes, and it's, it's changed the way we deliver value. Right, right. So this next one here, five, developing or develop planning scenarios. Absolutely. So we, I mentioned earlier the fact that this is a, you know, we're, we're moving towards this new normal and we don't know fully what that might be, but even if we did, we're going to see some, you know, planning scenarios playing out or various scenarios playing out that may be short-term perturbations. And what we're recommending is that you expect to see those sorts of things and plan for them. So you may not want to exercise all the planning scenarios. They're simply in your back pocket when you need them. But if you expect to, you know, that losing a particular component of your supply chain may happen, then plan for what you might, might, might do then. If you expect tariffs may be imposed or increased or decreased, plan for those scenarios that when they do happen, if they do happen, you're ready, you can mobilize quickly, respond quickly, beat your competitors uh, in responding to the marketplace. Right, so I'm, I'm starting to see how these steps are interrelated and how uh -huh. they're, they're, they're also related in you know, the interlinkages, if you will, of the meta trends that are happening. So I'm, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm picturing that. Yes. Uh, it, 
And number six here, evaluate, educate, and re reiterate. What, what do you mean by that? Well, that's both uh, for short-term and longer-term initiatives. You know, it's, it comes from the agile thinking uh, software development system, uh, but it's equally applicable to operations of all sorts. And that is, you're not going to get it, when you're operating in a dynamic, fast-changing environment, you're not going to get it right exactly the first time. In fact, you may get it wrong. Mm -hmm. So test things, you know, get them mostly working, get them sort of the minimum viable product, get that concept out, there's a minimal viable product or get service out there. Look at what happened successfully, look at what didn't work well, adjust quickly. That goes back into your short-term planning cycle so that you're constantly moving forward and either adjusting or, move, or, uh, or aborting something you've done. In some cases, you'll be aborting because it's simply no longer applicable, the markets change again. In other cases, you'll be aborting because it simply doesn't make, uh, it didn't work the way you hoped it to. But regardless, the, the important thing is to learn from the little mistakes and learn from your successes and keep on moving forward. Right, right. And the last one here, develop and execute a comprehensive communication plan. Absolutely. What we've seen, even prior to uh, what's happened here with the crisis, the pandemic, is communication, ironically, although relatively straightforward in concept, is something a lot of leaders uh, tend to shy away from. Uh, we're actually recommending over-communication because it's, it's hard to do it um, to over-communicate. People tend to want to hear things a few different times in a few different ways. So make sure you develop a comprehensive communication plan that stems out to all your stakeholders, whether they be your vendors, your staff, your partners, uh, and your clients. And it's okay to be vulnerable. We're not going to have all the answers and explain that to people that, you know, this is, this is what you're doing today. It may need to change again in the future. Uh, that's a good sign of leadership, vulnerability. And uh, again, communicate that vulnerability and communicate the fact that here is your direction for the time being and that uh, every time you change it, again, communicate it. And, and it makes sense to me. I, I know with our members that uh, uh, when I hear them talking about their, their products or services they're offering, it's, you know, sometimes I have to tell them to reflect a little bit. You're making assumptions. You've said it so many times. You assume that the person hearing understands every nuance that you're talking about. So to kind of go back and say, okay, maybe I need to simplify the message a little more to make it clearer and more effective. Uh, you know, so the other thing that the other thing that really tends to happen with business leaders is they're so involved in the strat planning process mm -hmm. that some of these things sort of bubble up through a series of lots of thoughts and conversations and they become what they would think is self obvious. But for those folks who are being in the trenches, who haven't been in those meetings, they're not as self-obvious. And, and as a result, uh, as leaders, we sometimes forget to share with people how we got there and why we're there and the background story. So you know, don't assume everyone has caught on quite as quickly as you. In fact, probably you haven't caught on that quickly either. It's taken a while and lots of thinking and lots of hard work. So, um, you know, share what, what you've done and share where you're going with, with staff and stakeholders. Right, right. And so for this, for, you know, there's, there's, we've, I think you've done a wonderful job in identifying the meta trends, uh, you know, establishing these key seven steps. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure, as you have mentioned before, there's a lot underlying all that. Um, how, how could, how could uh, someone like yourselves, like the Business Health Council, how could you help them uh, kind of navigate this, uh, this process, if you will? Well, we do have a guide that takes you seven steps and expands upon it, and we're happy to share that with folks. Uh, in addition, we are offering a free consultation uh, for people that want to, you know, a brief uh, run through that, that guide and to figure out how it might apply or may not apply to them. And then, of course, we're available for, uh, um, for projects as well to help people with this. We developed the guide with the, the intention of strengthening the business community in Canada and, and you know, around the world. Um, and you know, our feeling is that the, the stronger Canadian business is, the, the better we're going to be and the better we're going to weather this storm. 
Yeah, excellent. Well, uh, Bob, it's been a real pleasure having you on the show. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how these trends play out and uh, we should have you back uh, at a later time just to see how things have unfolded and, and what you're seeing with companies and how they're addressing these, uh, these issues. So again, uh, thanks Bob very much for being on the show. Thank you, happy to do that. Okay, take care. Bye. And thank you for joining us on The Dig. But before we leave, let's bring back Stephanie to tell us about our next guest. Hi, Steph. Hi, Ryan. Thank you. Next week, we will have Sam Butt from Titan Environmental on the show. Tune in and do not miss another great interview. Until then. Thanks, Stephanie. I'm looking forward to speaking with Sam. So until next time, I'm Ryan McEachern. Take care and stay safe.